Angles one and three. You are correct, those are corresponding angles. This is our transversal. It's important to keep track of what your transversal is as you move around in the different angle pairs. Okay, 11 and 15, Ton. Excellent answer, linear pair, 11 and 15, are not created by a transversal. When they don't rely on a transversal, that means it's gonna be a vocab word from a previous unit, from our angles unit, very good. All right, next one, six and nine, my. Perfect, alternate interior angles, six and nine, beautiful. Ralph, 13 and 10. Erase it. 13 and 10, Ralph. Yes, you're right. Vertical angles. Once again, these are not relying on a transversal and they are from the previous unit. Last one, Jane, 15 and 4. Very nice. 15 and 4 are the farthest away two angles can get. Alternate exterior angles. They're on alternate sides and they are outside of those, those lines that were given. Okay, let's check our homework answers. This homework, all it was having you practice was naming these angles. We spent a whole day naming them. And the reason we invested that much time is because for the rest of the unit, we're going to be using these names. And we're going to use them quickly, and we're just going to assume that you all know what we talk about when we name these angles. So hopefully when you did all 26 of these homework problems, you have these names down, and you can say them in your sleep. That was the goal. Okay, we're looking at 25 and 26. Refer to the diagram at the right. For AB and DC, cut by transversal AC, name the angle that's alternate interior to BAC. So there's BAC, angle 1, alternate interior would be this angle right here, DCA. So those are alternate interior angles, angle one and angle two. Okay, next one. Oops, that didn't work. For BC and AD, cut by transversal AC, name the angle that's alternate interior to BCA. So angle one, go to the alternate side, and it would be angle two. So that'd be DAC. So it helps a lot of times if you extend your lines, extend the lines, extend the transversal. All right, let's get into today's lesson. First, we're going to review some vocab. All right, the eagle logo and the helmet are vertical angles. Yes. Okay, eagle helmet and logo, alternate interior. Eagles and helmet, same side, exterior. Eagles and helmet, linear pair. Eagles and helmet, alternate, exterior. Very good. Eagles and helmet, for some reason, students struggle with these linear pairs. But yes, linear pair, very good. Eagles and helmet. Same side, interior. And there we go. Okay, so we did this yesterday, right? We got ahead. So we already drew a transversal. We already measured or, you know, used patty paper, compared the angles. And then we came up with something cool that happened. When we shaded our angles, we realized, when we shaded the angles, we realized that there was a relationship. So we realized that half of the angles were congruent to each other, and the other half of the angles were the supplement to the original angles. So we realized that if and only if, if and only if, these lines are parallel, cool things happen. Um, notice that 
If I know one angle, like if I know that this is 100, I know all the angles because all the blue ones are 100 and all the green ones are the supplement of 100. They're 80. So when this situation happens, if you know one angle, you know all eight angles at once. That's powerful, people. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all the vocab words that we had yesterday and we're going to categorize them, okay? So let's look at each one. Let's pull this one first. Alternate exterior. Look at your shading and find two angles that are alternate exterior. Are they the same color or are they different colors? Are they congruent or are they supplementary? Good. So when you look at your shading, like if I call this, um, well, 100 and 100. There we go. Those are alternate exterior and they're both blue, so they're congruent. Okay, what about corresponding angles? Find a pair of corresponding angles. There's a pair. This 100 that we started with and this 100 right here. So those are also congruent angles if our lines are parallel. Okay, what about same side exterior? This 80 and this 100 would be same side exterior. Those are not the same. We colored those different colors, so they are supplementary. What about same side interior? So like this 100 right here and this 80 right here, these two are same side interior. They're not congruent, they're supplementary. Do you see a pattern there in the supplementary column? Everything in that column starts with an S, supplementary. Same side interior, same side exterior. They all start with an S. That's good news. Okay, um, alternate interior. Look at the picture. Green, green. Blue, blue. They match. Congruent. So these are our new words. This is going to happen. Every single time this is going to happen if our lines are parallel. Everything that starts with an S is going to be supplementary, and everything that doesn't start with an S is going to be congruent. They're either supplementary or congruent. They don't have any other relationship if the lines are parallel. Now, let's categorize our old words from last unit. Where would vertical angles fall? Mind blown. Y'all are cute. They would fall in the congruent, and where would linear pair fall? Darn, it's going to mess up our pattern with the starting with an S. But even though it doesn't start with an S, it sure does have that word line in the word, and we know a line is 180, so it, it, we know it really fits there. Okay, let's do some examples. I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and draw this in your notes, wherever you take notes. This angle is 120 degrees. Find all other angles. Go. All right, so... Like we said, as long as this is given to us, we know all eight angles when given one angle. So let's name all the angles that are 123 or 120. Angle one, angle four, um, corresponding angles, so angle five, and then vertical angles, angle eight. Notice it has a pattern, it kind of goes diagonally 120, 120, 120. So then all of our other ones would be the supplement of 120, 60, 60, 60, 60. Easy stuff, especially when I make the numbers so pretty like that, okay? Uh-oh, what about when I throw 16 angles at you? Dun, dun, dun. Easy mode, you're funny. We are in easy mode. Okay, now this has to be true. If that statement wasn't there, you throw everything we just learned out the window. Let me show you a cool trick. Let me get my fancy highlighter out. I call it the circle trick. So later when I'm like, hey guys, did you remember to use the circle trick? This is what I'm talking about. So the circle trick is you pick a diagonal. You can pick the diagonal going in the direction that I did, or you can pick the diagonal going in the other direction. doesn't matter. You circle all the angles along that diagonal all the angles that go in that direction that I drew. See how they're all going in that direction. Every angle that I just circled or highlighted is congruent. 1 is congruent to 13, is congruent to 9, is congruent to 8. All the ones I didn't circle are supplementary to the ones I circled. So look how awesome this is. So I tell you, angle 6 is 85. Now we know everything not circled is 85. 
How much is everything circled? The supplement of 85, 95. So everything highlighted, everything circled is 95. Everything not circled is 85. All right, let's do it. Angle 2. You know right away what angle 2 is. It's not circled. So it is 85. Angle 4. It is circled. So it matches all the circled ones. 95. And angle 14, it is not circled. So, 85. Easy, easy. Now let's try some harder ones. All right. I'm going to give you time to put this example in your notes because I want this one in your notes. So go ahead and draw the whole diagram and then solve for X and Y. Using what you know about parallel lines and your new vocab and whether they're congruent or supplementary. So the first thing that you would do on a picture like this is that when you're given information like GI is parallel to IJ, you go to your picture. Oh, sorry, GH. I was like, that doesn't make sense. GH is parallel to IJ. You go to your picture and you add arrows so you can keep track of your parallel lines. Now, when you're still getting used to this, if you want to get a marker out or a highlighter out, you're totally allowed to. It A lot of times it helps students when you extend the parallel lines and extend the transversal. It helps students see the relationship better. You're more than allowed to mark on your quizzes and your tests with highlighter if that helps you. Now we need to find some angle relationships. Let's start with this angle right here. What's the vocab word for 122 in angle Y? What's the vocab word? Corresponding. You're going to see that angle relationship so very many times. Corresponding does not start with an S. If it doesn't start with an S, they're congruent. If it does start with an S, they're supplementary. So what's the measure of angle Y? It's 122. Those angles are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent all the time, every time, as long as we have parallel lines. Okay, now, I know we could use supplementary here, but I'm going to, um, like, I know we could use the straight line here, but I want to look at this relationship between this angle and this angle. These two angles are same side interior angles. Do you see that? how they're same side interior, and same side starts with an S. So we know that those angles are going to be supplementary. So I would do 122 plus 18, and I would subtract that sum from 180. Okay? What do you get? 40. Good. So X is 40. So when your picture doesn't look like the pictures we've been looking at, extend your lines and make it look like the relationships we've seen. Okay, try this one. Find X and Y. What do those big arrows mean? Parallel. On a picture like this, I do recommend that you look at these transversals one at a time. Look at the transversals one at a time. So only look at this transversal first. I'm going to give you some time to draw this in your notes. Okay, so let's take a look at these angles right here. We've got this angle that we're given. We've got this angle that we're given. Always start by naming the relationship. What is the relationship between 40 and 5x? What's the vocab word? Good. So the vocab word is same side interior angles. So I'm allowed to do 40 plus 5x equals 180 because the same side interior angle theorem says that if two lines are parallel, then same side interior angles are supplementary. So it's kind of like um, it's a conjecture with a hypothesis and a conclusion. If two lines are parallel, then same side interior angles are supplementary. All of these are hypothesis, conclusion, they're conjectures. Okay, so final answer, X is, type it in, 28. Beautiful. Actually, it's not, it's not a degree measure, it's just a variable. All right, so now we can do the same thing over here. We're going to do it separately. 
this angle and this angle are also same side interior angles. Therefore, we know that they are supplementary because our lines are parallel. So what do you get when you add these two to equal 180? Oops, 70. Let's get ahead of myself. Are they the same thing? Oh, there we go. Nine. Did you get nine? Solution. Y is nine. All right, let's keep trucking, guys. Oh, that's the end of our lesson. Have a great weekend. I do want to go over, I don't think I spent enough or gave enough emphasis to the hypothesis and the conclusion part. Let's go over that and let's remind ourselves of some um, of our logic, okay? So I was saying if two lines are parallel, then let's do this. Corresponding angles are congruent. If two lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. What is the converse of that? We're going to go over that on Monday, but we can get ahead. What's the converse of that? Let's see. If corresponding angles are congruent, then two lines are parallel. The original is true and the converse is true. Um, what's the inverse of this sentence? What's the inverse of this sentence? Because we need to spiral this through. We don't want to forget about it, okay? Um, the inverse would be if two lines are not parallel, then corresponding angles are not congruent. And that is also a true statement. So all of these statements are true. Cool. Thank you for letting me review that. I feel better now. <laughs> now you may work on your assignment.